Hey everyone, and welcome back to episode four of my Create Mod tutorial series. Today we're going to be covering mechanical crafting and how to make an ore processing system, which will even process ores better than a Fortune 3 pickaxe. If you missed episode three, please go ahead and check out that video in the top right hand corner of the screen so that you're all caught up for this episode. And as always, if you enjoy my videos, please drop a like and feel free to subscribe for more content. But anyways, let's jump into the video. So everything that you're going to need for this episode is going to be inside of this chest right here. And there's a lot of items, so let me go over a couple different things. Hey everyone, I'm currently editing this video and I'm not feeling great right now, just like I was in this video. And for some reason, I thought you needed 21 crafting tables instead of 7. Yeah, I was, I was a little bit off. So uh, what that means is to consider everything that I say in the video, it's correct. However, the correct number of items that you need is going to be inside of the description of this video, and I, I figured I'd pass that information so no one gets confused. Uh, but thank you all, and let me pass you back to the video. Uh, the soul sand is not going to be really required. Depending on how you want to uh, set up your mechanical crafters, you might not need a rotation speed controller, so I recommend maybe watching the video before you start. All of these water buckets are going to be used to power different sets of water wheels as well as an encased fan. It's going to blow water and wash ores at a certain point. So you can just make a water source. You don't need all these water buckets. The diamond ore, the iron ore, that's going to be to test our system. So you don't necessarily need those. But this ore processing system is going to be able to process anything from like diamond ore to iron ore to quartz to all different things like that. Uh, but other than that, uh, these are all the items. They're in the description and let's get started. So to get started, I figured the best thing we should do is to start off with how are we gonna process ores? So if we open up just enough items, we can see we could take iron ore, and of course we can put it in a blast furnace, we can smelt it, and it's just gonna equal one iron ingot. We also have the ability to crush it, which is gonna give us one iron ore, a chance at two other iron ore, which is 30%, and a chance at making cobblestone as well. Uh, we can bulk blast it, which is just basically the same as smelting, or we can mill it, which will just, again, just make one. So we're going to use crushing wheels, because that gives us the biggest chance of an output. And then with crushed iron ore, we can, of course, blast it, smelt it, we can bulk blast it, or we can wash it, which is going to give us 10 iron nuggets, and then a chance of getting another 5 iron nuggets per crushed iron ore. And as you probably know, 9 iron nuggets equals 1 ingot, so this gives us a chance to get even more iron from a single piece of iron ore. So... Once we have iron nuggets, we can of course just craft things into uh, an iron ingot, or we could use, uh, what is it? We could use automated packing, which is a mechanical press in a basin, which will automatically pack it into an iron ingot. So we're gonna set that up as well, so that all we have to do is throw something in a chest, and it's automatically gonna output our ingots at the very end of the day. So that's our system, and it seems really complicated. I promise you it's not gonna be that complicated. But the one thing we have to worry about is our crushing wheels. And you're looking at this probably going, what the heck is this rocket on the screen? This is mechanical crafting. And it's basically if you were building a crafting grid out of blocks and you need 21 of these different crafting grid parts that are called mechanical crafters formed in this shape with all of these ingredients for it to output a crushing wheel. And it outputs two of them, which is what we're looking for. Again, it seems confusing. Don't worry, I'm gonna walk you all through this. Now, to get started, I want to go ahead and talk about the very first item we're going to craft, which is a wrench. And uh, it's just three golden sheets, a cogwheel, and a stick. And this is like the create mod tool that you will use here on out. It allows you to rotate objects. It allows you to pick objects up very easily. And it's even going to be able to be uh, used to configure a lot of different machines, including the mechanical crafters. So once we've crafted that, we might as well start crafting our mechanical crafters, which is an electron tube two cogwheels, a brass casing, and a crafting table. And just a reminder, because I don't remember if I crafted these before, a brass casing is two brass sheets, so brass ingots that are pressed, and six planks and a log to make four. And we're making 21 of these mechanical crafters. So what that means is we have to make seven of each of these guys, and that will turn into 21 mechanical crafters. And once we do that, uh, we're going to go ahead and craft a couple other things. We're going to make some mechanical belts, which are six pieces of dried kelp. Of course, kelp is just uh, kelp that's been put on a campfire, smelted. You can even bulk blast it if you've set a system up like that. We haven't done that before, uh, but that turns into two mechanical belts. Then we're going to go ahead and make andesite funnels, which I'll explain their uses later on. Two andesite alloys, two dried kelp equals an, or two andesite funnels, and we'll need both of those. We're also going to make brass funnels, which is the same exact recipe or close to the andesite funnel recipe, but two brass ingots, electron tube, and dried kelp equals two of these guys. 
We're also going to make two filters, which are two or an iron nugget on either side of a piece of white wool. We'll turn into two filters, which again, I'll talk about that in a second. And we're going to make an encased fan, which is a shaft, two cogwheels, an andesite casing, and a propeller. And a propeller is four iron sheets and an andesite alloy, which will craft that. And then we can craft our encased fan. And I know that we just crafted a ton of stuff and you're probably a little confused. It's okay. We're getting into the automation side of create and how to automate all of these processes so that we don't have to do much once we're in a certain situation. So just bear with me. It's a lot that I'm throwing at you, but trust me, I'm going to walk you through it step by step. So to get started, we're going to have to find an area to build our mechanical crafters. And I recommend just a very large area that's going to allow you to place all of these blocks because it's going to really take up a lot of area, maybe even just a gigantic warehouse or maybe design this first and then build a building around it or something. But I'm just going to build it outside to make it a little easier. Now, uh, what I have here is an area where we're going to place down our water wheels, but I want to show you a neat little trick with soul sand that'll actually give us a little bit more stress, so a little bit more power with our machine. So if we place down two soul sand and then we place down a water bucket uh, on top of both of these soul sands and then just two more water buckets above that, we'll create some bubble columns that are going to come up and then we could place down a water wheel which this is a perfect example for our wrench. You can see I've placed it in the wrong direction. If I just right click, I can just rotate it, place down another one, and boom, they're both going in the same direction. They're actually spinning a little bit faster and they're creating more stress, which is perfect for our system without having to build a third water wheel. Now we can just place down our rotation speed controller uh, and place down our large cog wheel above that and place down a shaft. And this is going to allow us to pull the power and modify the speed, which we're really gonna need for our system. Let's place down another shaft. Then we're gonna grab our mechanical crafters and a cog wheel. Place down one cog wheel, then place down mechanical crafters, another set of mechanical crafters, but one more on either side. And then we're gonna go up two, if I can place them. Another two, another two, another two, another two. And then our last three on top. And if you're wondering where I have gotten this design from, that is from our crushing wheel layout. So you can see that we went up three and then five, 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 and three. And that is what we're looking at right here. Now, uh, before we go ahead and continue, I wanna point out two things. One, you'll probably use this setup in the future, but not for something as large as a crushing wheel. If so, if you just add a button to the side, you can activate things even if you don't fill all of these slots. Uh, and that's just like a little tip. But what we're gonna do is take our wrench and you're gonna see there's all of these arrows that you can rotate. What this is doing is when you place an item into its inventory slot, once all of the items are filled up, it's gonna start pushing them all together. And this is where the items are gonna connect. So you just wanna make sure that they're all connecting together and then they have one little output spot at the very end. So um, I'm just gonna start rotating these things just to the best of my ability so that they don't actually break on us. Uh, and you can see that right now we have all three of these guys going in, all three of these things going in, all of these going in, and then they're all getting pushed down and meeting here. So once we've done that, we can go ahead and grab our andesite. We're going to grab our oak planks. We're going to grab a piece of stone, place the stone in the center, planks around the outside, and then a bunch of andesite around the outside as well. And you're going to see it glow all yellow, and then it should start being pushed all together now. And there you go. Look at that. It's made our crushing wheels. And these guys are huge, uh, but we're going to go ahead and set up our ore processing system right away. So uh, we can leave this entire system up and running. And let's go over to an area over here that I've started to construct the beginnings of an ore processing system. And you don't have to worry about anything that's pre-built. Don't panic. All I've done is basically dig some holes in the ground. But we're going to find an area to start off with that's going to be where we're going to place down our chest. So where we're going to actually put our ores in right in the beginning. And we'll just put down two chests. Now, once we do that, we need a way to pull items out of the chest. So I'm going to grab some belts, andesite funnels, some shafts, uh, and some vertical gearboxes to kind of plan ahead a bit. We're going to go diagonal down one, place a shaft, go over two blocks, and then on either side of this trench that we've dug, we're going to place down vertical gearboxes, another shaft, go over two more blocks, place down another shaft, and then click, right click with the uh, mechanical belt on the first shaft, go to the other one and connect it. And now we have a mechanical belt set up. And we're gonna place an andesite funnel off of the side of this chest. Now andesite funnels will just automatically pull items out of a chest and place it onto a belt, a depot, whatever it's connected to. And there is no like filter or anything like that. It'll just pull an item one at a time and place it onto a belt. 
Now these vertical gearboxes, we're actually gonna place our crushing wheels on top. And what this is going to do is actually turn these crushing wheels once there's a power source in opposite rotations. So one will go clockwise, one will go counterclockwise, and that will crush the items that are on the belt as they travel through, which is again, the beginning of our ore processing system where we were gonna go ahead and crush our items. And that also works for diamonds, where if we go ahead and put a diamond ore in there, it's gonna give us two with a chance of getting a third one, and it gives us a chance of getting cobblestone. Now that brings me to the chance of getting cobblestone and also our unique ores. So things like iron ore, when we crush it, turns into the crushed version, and then we're gonna wash it and things like that. But things like emeralds, diamonds, lapis, uh, redstone, anything like that, it doesn't turn into a crushed variant, it just turns into more of itself and a chance of cobblestone. So we need to pull it out of the system before it goes through the rest of it. So what we're going to do is take a brass funnel, we're going to take some chests, and we're going to take a filter, place down two chests, place one brass funnel off the side of this chest that's aimed at the mechanical belt, and we've actually screwed up already. You're going to see that there's an arrow that's currently facing towards the mechanical belt, and this is actually pulling items out of the chest and placing them on the belt. We don't want that to happen. We want to pull items off the belt, so we're going to right-click with a wrench. Now, at the moment, this is actually going to pull all items off the belt. That's not what we're looking for. We still want our nuggets to go through. So we have a couple options, but we're going to take a filter and we're just going to add in all of our crushed variants into this filter. Now, if you have just enough items, you actually don't need to make all these crushed variants first. You can actually click and drag from just enough items and it will place them into our filter, which is perfect. Uh, if you don't have just enough items, I recommend you get it, but if not, uh, you can always go ahead and just craft these versions of the crushed versions and just actually place them in the filter. Now, at the moment, this is on an allow list, and what that means is if we place this filter onto our brass funnel, it's going to pull all of only the crushed variants and put them into the chest, and we don't want that. We want the opposite effect. We want the crushed variants to stay on the belt and pull absolutely everything else and put it into a chest. So we're just gonna click deny list. This is now not letting anything that's crushed go through, but allowing everything else to go through. And we're just gonna place that filter onto the brass funnel. Now that we've done that, we're gonna grab a depot, place it at the end of our belt, and you're probably gonna realize what we're doing here. So we're pulling our crushed variants through. They're not getting pulled into here and they're being placed onto a depot. And this is gonna be our washing station. This is where we're washing our ores. So once again, if you remember, our crushed ores go through and we're going to wash them and turn them into nuggets. Now, in order to do that, we're going to do a little bit of a create trick, but let's uh, let's go ahead and place down two shafts, just like so. Then we're going to go ahead and grab some cogwheels, and we're going to place a cogwheel off of the end of this shaft, if I can do it. Place one, place two, and then we're going to place down three, four, and this is planning for our powering of the system in the second, but now that we've done that, Hypothetically, we'll have our power source going from this glass right here. And we're going to need to wash our ores on the depot. So the way we do that is we're going to take an encased fan. If I can find it. There we go. And we're going to take a water bucket. Place our encased fan so the fan side is facing the depot with one spot in between right here. And we're going to place down our water. So this is going to blow air through the water and actually wash ores that are on top of the depot. Now that we've done that, and these ores have now changed into iron nuggets, or any type of nugget, we need to pull those nuggets off of the depot. And we need to place them into a basin with a press so that we can press them into ingots. So diagonal up one side, we'll place a basin, and then we're going to place a mechanical press on top. Now, one thing again that we've run into is at the moment, this little compartment has opened up off the side, and what this is saying is once this press comes down, and it presses something, place it back onto the depot. That's not what we want to do. We want to pull it out of the system as soon as we do that. So we're going to take a brass funnel. We're going to place it onto the side of, uh, basically, of the side of the basin connected to the depot. Take our wrench, rotate it so the arrow is facing the basin. And then we're going to grab a filter. And we're going to actually just search up nuggets. And we're just going to drag these guys in here. And then we're going to click the allow list if it's not already checked. And this is basically saying, hey, once they turn to nuggets, go ahead and place them into the basin. So once we've done that, we need to then pull them out of the system. So we're just going to take some shafts, go diagonal down, place down two shafts, take a belt, connect the belt. And then we don't even need a filter or, or excuse me, a funnel because now the only other spot it has to go is once it presses is to just put it onto the mechanical belt. So we don't need another funnel or anything like that. 
and we're just going to place down two chests and place down an andesite funnel, which is just going to pull every item off the belt and place it into the chest. So now that we've done that, we've run into a tiny bit of an issue, and I'm going to show you what this issue is. So let's go ahead and power our system by taking our water buckets, placing them down, grabbing our water wheels, and then uh, <laughs> placing them in the correct direction. And you're going to see that we have our belt moving in the correct direction. We have our crushing wheels going ahead and crushing things. They're going in opposite rotations. They're coming over onto the depot. We actually have our encased fan slowly moving, uh, which might be a little difficult to see, but you can see if you zoom in, the fan is moving. And now if you look here, look at this gear. This thing is turning clockwise. But if we go all the way over here, this one's turning counterclockwise, and this is going to connect to our belt. And what this would actually do is this is going to turn our belt the wrong way. So our belt would be moving from the chest and going towards the basin, and we don't want that. So an easy trick is actually to just place down a gearbox, then place down um, our cog wheels, which the cog wheel doesn't matter. It could also be a shaft, but the gearbox is going to change rotations. So now our mechanical belt's going the correct direction. And then we'll just place the rest of our cogwheels up to here to then power up our press. All right, so now that we've done that, we've actually built an ore processing system. To show you how this works, I'm going to put down two diamond ore and two iron ore inside of this chest. And once we do that, we're going to watch our diamond ore come out. It's going to be crushed, turn into one diamond, two diamonds, uh, and then turn into some iron or crushed iron, excuse me. We can see we've made two so far. So we didn't get that extra percentage, but that's totally okay. And we're going to watch our iron nuggets go into the press. We're going to go ahead and watch it press out really quick. And there we go. Now that it's pressed, remember we started with two diamonds. We actually have four diamonds now. So we actually got the lowest rate. We didn't get any of the extra percentages. We just doubled our diamonds. And we got three iron ingots. So we actually got some bonus iron. And that was with the lowest that we could have gotten. We could have gotten a lot more. But uh, there you go, and you now have a fully operational ore processing system where no matter what type of ore you have, you can just throw it in this chest and it will process it all for us. And I do want to point out that any leftover iron nuggets or any type of nuggets will just actually sit inside of this basin and wait until we get the nine iron nuggets or uh, any type of iron or any type of nuggets that we're looking for, and then it will press them and put them into this chest. I just want to say thank you so much for watching this video. If you guys enjoyed, definitely drop a like, feel free to subscribe, feel free to check out my Discord. There are a ton of people in there that are huge Create Mod fans. They know everything and anything. I even had someone help me out with the whole Soul Sand trick because I completely forgot it in the beginning of this video. But uh, other than that, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you guys all in the next one.